Howdy folks, it's been a long time so I thought I'd make a video. For all of those people who have the attention span of a fly and don't really care about any details, I will post a timestamp somewhere on the screen and you can skip towards the, uh, the interesting part. Um, but I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, UPS batteries um, to begin with. So anyone who's in, in the tech industry, um, you know, whether you just, you know, you, you like computers or you're, you work in IT, um, you, you no doubt dealt with uninterruptible power supplies at some point. Um, you know, if you're at a small business, uh, you probably have, you know, a fleet of them. And they are, you know, they're an essential part of your infrastructure and you probably also hate them. Uh, because, of course, they have this wonderful tendency of failing uh, at exactly the moment they're needed the most. Um, and so, you know, there's there's a whole bunch of different ways of handling this. Um, a lot of companies, especially one, you know, ones that have a lot of money, they'll just go on a schedule and every so many years they'll just replace all the batteries in their UPSs. And this results in them throwing away batteries that are perfectly good which increases waste, which I'm not a big fan of, and it also has quite a big cost associated with it. And it doesn't even really solve the problem because there are batteries that are still going to fail prematurely before you replace them. And so the only way to really kind of get around that is to replace it such a, such a short interval that it, it just doesn't make sense. And, um, you know, the whole point of an uninterruptible power supply is that the load never loses power. Um, and so a lot of the methods people use of testing them um, generally result in the load losing power, which in my opinion is not acceptable. So a lot of people will just, you know, they'll just pull the plug and see does it hold the load up. Um, if it immediately shuts off, you know the battery is definitely bad. And uh, I'm not a big fan of this approach for two reasons. The first one is it ge only gives you a binary uh, output as to whether the battery is, is okay-ish or not. Um, and of course, it has the potential of killing the load, which is again what we're trying to avoid. Um, and it doesn't even tell you how healthy the battery is. It just tells you that it was able to hold it up for a few seconds. If you really want to know how healthy the battery is, you need to figure out how long it can hold the load up, which, again, requires you to eventually just you know, let it discharge until the load gets disconnected, which is not only is that you know, unacceptable uh, as per the previous definition, but it also means that it's going to take 8 to 16 hours to recharge that battery, and if there is a power event in that period of time, you are not going to be as protected um, or, or, you know, the UPS may not, not function at all, so um, it's not particularly a, a great idea. Um, what I'm more of a fan of is to take the battery uh, out and replace it with a known good battery and then test the battery you take out. And you can switch batteries and UPSs while they're plugged in. I, I know every manual says don't do that, um, but, you know, that's just basically them covering their ass. You can absolutely change... UPS batteries in consumer UPSs while they're plugged in um, and you know you can do it within like 10 seconds so taking a battery out putting a new battery in uh, probably leaves you with uh, no more than 30 seconds of total time where the battery is disconnected and that's a very short window um, to lose protection for um, so I think that that is a an acceptable risk and if you do that, you're left with a battery like this one. This is a, like a 9 amp hour uh, APC battery. Um, this is a 12 volt monoblock, and this is like very common. And once you've taken the battery out and you don't know whether it's any good or not, you have to figure out whether it's, it's good. And how do you test a battery um, like this? You can't use a, a voltmeter. You cannot use a multimeter to test this because a bad battery will charge up just fine. Um, obviously, if it, if it doesn't charge all the way, it's, you know, it's got probably a shorted cell or something's really bad badly wrong with it, but uh, when batteries, when they go bad, they'll still charge perfectly fine, and they'll look fine, um, but as soon as you try to pull any appreciable current from them, they will fail, and so I wanted to share with, uh, with you guys what I do um, for testing my batteries, because I happen to have a lot, a lot of UPSs, everything in my house has a UPS on it, so I have a whole fleet of these things, um, and I think anyone who's, who's you know, who's doing this, um, you know, who has to manage them for a living, uh, this is definitely something you want to invest in. And what I use, uh, which may surprise some people and may also be super obvious uh, to others, is uh, one of these things. So this is a car battery tester. Um, now this particular one, the one that I own, is made by a company called Ancel. It's the BA101. You don't have to use this particular tester. Um, this just happens to be the one that I bought. Um, now, like I said, this is designed for car batteries. 
And in general, car batteries are uh, 12 volt lead acid monoblocks, which is very similar, uh, but not completely the same as what you find in most UPSs. And if you buy a tester which has a wide enough operating range and gives you um, specific uh, readouts, you can use it to test um, lead acid batteries found in UPSs. And these things are not very expensive. So I bought this one on sale um, for about 50 Canadian dollars. So that's, that works out to about 38 US dollars. Um, so that they're not expensive. Um, and I think if you're using this in a, a corporate environment, it's definitely uh, something to uh, you know, invest in because you, know, you will absolutely use it all the time. And so I'm going to explain about what this actually does, and I'll show you um, like what kind of outputs you'll get because, and how to use this, because all the manual is going to talk about is cars, and this is not a car battery, and so there are things you need to do a little bit differently. So this battery is, is, is bad, and I also have another battery with me which is brand new, and I'll show you the differences. So what this thing actually does is it measures the internal resistance of the battery. So... Uh, Simply, if you, you think of a, a, an electric circuit, um, you, know, you have a voltage and then you have some, some resistance on its way to the load. And you know, with Ohm's law, the more current you pass through that resistance, the higher the voltage drop across that resistance. And this is why you use you know, really thick wires to reduce the resistance as much as possible between the battery and, and the load. But there is actually a, a, an internal resistance uh, inside the battery to do with the chemistry and everything and that you can't eliminate that. And so once the internal resistance of, that ba of the battery rises above a certain level, um, when you try to draw the, a current out of the battery, the voltage will immediately plummet from you know, fully charged to basically below you know, f fully discharged and the battery, um, you know, the, the UPS will cut out um, because it's not being supplied sufficient voltage. And at that point, the battery would be considered unusable. And so um, over time, this internal resistance increases. And so by knowing what a, a new battery is and what a, a failed battery is, you can look at the, the resistance that this gives you and you can determine how, you know, how far along the battery is in its life. Um, and you can do that very accurately. Um, this meter, um, I can't speak to its exact accuracy because it's the only meter I have, but it's very close um, to... Uh, the readings that I'm getting are very close to what the data sheets for the batteries that I have say they should be, and it's very precise. So it's actually very, uh, very repeatable. I can measure the same battery over and over again, and I get, um, you know, within 0.1 milliohm of the same value every time. So it, it, it definitely, at least this model, seems to be doing its job properly, um, and it's not just making up numbers, um, which is one thing that I hear a lot of people complain about these kinds of battery testers for doing. So um, to know exactly how to do this, I'm going to bring in a, uh, a new battery here. So this battery comes from a company called UPSBatteryCenter.com. Um, and of course, you're going to need to know how to, how to hook this kind of tester up. Uh, generally, they're going to ask uh, a couple of questions about your battery. And you're going to need to know how to answer those um, if you want to use all of the functionality. Um, but you don't necessarily need to know all of the answers. So. Uh, I think the easiest way to do this is to just hook up the battery. So this one's powered from the battery itself. So I'm just going to, doing this with the camera in the way. Uh, let's make sure that you can actually read this. So it has a whole bunch of features, but let's just go through, you know, out of vehicle test because it's not connected to anything else. And it asks what type of battery it is. So this is uh, an absorbent glass mat flat plate battery. Um, so AGM is, is basically the way that this is a sealed battery. Um, so we're just going to pick that and then it's going to ask what measurement do we want to use and it's going to have a whole bunch of these you know cold cranking amps and a whole bunch of the other standards for measuring batteries but um, what we really want to use is is cranking amps because this battery is is at you know room temperature which is around 25 degrees um, you know somewhere around there cold cranking amps is I believe negative 18 degrees Celsius and this is clearly not that cold so we want to use this rating and then it asks what is the cranking amp rating of the battery. And of course, this is not a car battery. It doesn't have a cranking amp rating. But if you look at the data sheet for this particular battery, it says that it can handle a short duration current of 135 amps. And so that is effectively the cranking amp rating of this battery. And so I can, um, of course, 
course it would help if I actually had the bloody terminals on all the way, so I will apologize and do that again. The only thing that's kind of sucks about this meter is it doesn't remember what the last cranking amp you set was, so you have to change it every single time, which is kind of unfortunate. So once you have the leads on correctly, of course, you have to make sure your connection is really good because we're dealing with very low resistances here. So you want to make sure that you have a good bite on the uh, on the connection uh, terminals. And so here you can see that it's reading the internal resistance is 17.57 milliohms. And so that is the important number. Um, realistically, all this other stuff, you know, the health is all determined by this rating we've given it. Really, the only ma uh, value that matters here is the milliohm internal resistance rating. So as long as your battery tester gives you this value um, unconditionally, then you can use it for testing these batteries. You don't need, um, you know, any of this other stuff. Most of them seem to go down to about 100 cranking amps or so. Um, so you should be fine, but that's really the important value. So you can see it says 17.57, um, and I've got actually written on my battery here, 17.5 was the last time I tested it, so it's still repeatable. And the data sheet for this battery, which I'll bring up again, shows that it's around 19 milliohms for a brand new battery. So this battery is actually a little bit below what it's rated at. Um, and so, you know, that's why, you know, it's showing, you know, it's showing 100% because it's, you know, rate, it's, you know, ab above its original rating. This is all, you know, just internally calculated based on this value. And just to show you um, how that actually doesn't matter, if I do an out of, if I do the same out of vehicle test again, but instead of 135 cranking amps, I just change that to some other random value, and I do a test, the, the internal resistance rating will be exactly the same, but the, uh, so you can see this is still 17.57, it's exactly the same, but now it's telling me that the battery is bad because it's, you know, it's under its rating. So you actually, like I said, you don't need the cranking amp rating or any of that stuff. You just need this reading, which will be the same no matter what other stuff you put in. So that's really what's important. And that is how you can tell whether a battery is good or not. Um, and so obviously find a, a data sheet for the battery type that you're using and figure out what that value is supposed to be. Uh, and then you can figure out what a good starting um a good starting uh, resistance is. So I'll bring in the original battery that I had on the table. This is an old APC battery. Um, and this one, as you can see here, um, 65.3 milliohms, which is pretty trash. Um, and so this, this is an old battery and it absolutely has failed. And uh, of course you all know what you're going to see, but I will show you anyway. And again, I'll for the sake of argument, I'll bring this all the way down just to show you. But again, that, like I said, that's not actually required. And so you can, you know, basically it, it's just, all this device is doing is it's just uh, up, applying a, a small load and it's measuring the change in voltage to figure out what the, uh, the internal resistance is using, you know, Ohm's law. And so here you can see that it, it says that this can a output a maximum of 55 amps. You know, you can ignore the cranking amps. 55 uh, peak amps is what this can do. Um, and so depending on the UPS that this is in, that may not be enough to sustain the load, and that, that's why this thing may fail. So figuring out what the threshold is is going to be determined by how big of a UPS you're putting these batteries in. Um, so in this case, the UPS it was in, uh, this, is, this is not acceptable anymore. So I have to uh, remove this from service. So that's pretty much um, all I want to say about these things. Um, this one is uh, pretty pretty nice. It seems to be um, it seems to be well made. I mean, there's a little bit of chinglish in the manual, but it's it seems to be okay. It has one kind of interesting feature. It's got a USB port on the side, uh, which is in this case, it's th this thing just has a little STM32 microcontroller in it, and they're using one of the UARTs um, to uh, the a, a PC, and so this this just appears as a, a, a serial port, and um, there's a, an option in the menu to print data, and basically it will take the last measurement and it will output um, like just human readable text over the serial port at 11, uh, 5, 200, 11, 11, 5, 200 baud um, and so you can uh, use that to you know you're supposed to be able to, to like print it um, obviously like if you were a tech to print to a customer or whatever but uh, you could parse that output if you wanted to hook this up to a computer and maybe write a little script or something that parses that data um, unfortunately, I, I don't think you can actually write data to it. I haven't been able to get it to accept any commands, so I'm not sure if they've even got any software that reads from the serial port. So, um, unfortunately, I, I haven't found a way to like fully automate this thing yet. 
um, but that's something I, I'll deal with later. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much all I think I have for this video. Um, these things are really useful in when determining uh, how much life you have uh, left in a battery. And uh, actually, one one last thing before I go, and I'll make uh, a quick mention of this because I've seen um, I've seen uh, this mistake be done by. Uh, a bunch of people. So when you buy uh, replacement UPS batteries like this one, um, generally uh, one way to save yourself some money is to just figure out what type of battery it uses and buy you know a generic battery of that rather than going through you know uh, the UPS model you have because generally a lot of people will just charge you extra just for the sake of cross-referencing your battery um, type to the model of UPS. So if you figure it out yourself you could save um, sometimes actually like like 10 bucks per battery. It's kind of ridiculous. Um, so what's interesting is this is a 12 volt 9 amp hour battery and uh, it's this is like a, a, a very common size and you can buy this same same exact size, same terminals, everything is the same except it's 12 volts 7.2 amp hours and it's like four dollars cheaper uh, and that's Canadian so it's it's even less in the US and I honestly would never buy the 7.2 amp hour battery, even if that was the battery that my UPS came with. And there's two reasons for that. The first one is obviously the higher capacity battery will last longer in your UPS, so you get more runtime out of it. That's an obvious benefit. The second reason is the internal resistance of these high capacity batteries is generally lower than the internal resistance of the low capacity batteries. So the this battery, like I said, the, the data sheet says it has a, a nominal internal resistance of 19 milliohms, whereas the 7.2 amp hour cell, its data sheet from the same manufacturer, rates its nominal at 28 milliohms. So what that means is that this battery can effectively age for longer before it reaches a, a threshold internal resistance, whereas the the lower amp hour batteries um, will will reach that more quickly, and so they'll have to be replaced faster uh, than these batteries. So not only do you get more runtime, but you actually get more service life out of them. Um, and for the minimal cost difference, for you know this is a, a thirty three dollar battery for an extra, f uh, and, and you save four dollars for the seven point two amp hour. Um, this, in my opinion, is a much better value. And you can always put these bigger batteries in a, uh, a you know a UPS that may have only shipped with a seven point two amp hour battery um, because they're exactly the same dimensions um, and so they'll fit no problem and uh, so that's just I guess one last thing I, I'd like to mention um, because it's uh, it's something that I see a lot of people doing and I don't I don't really think it uh, makes a lot of sense to buy those batteries some people just buy them because they're cheaper or some people just buy them because that's what, what what gets cross-referenced but um, when you when you start taking into account what you know when you know about internal internal resistance of batteries it's always something to look at so anyway, um, hopefully this was uh, helpful or interesting to somebody. And um, yeah, and of course you can always use this to test your car battery so uh, you get some extra bonus features. So anyway, um, I guess uh, see you next time. Bye.